yes, I feel that the ketogenic diet is going to be making a comeback because Dr. Berg is talking about keto again. So I'm going to do a review of his video talking about when to change your ketogenic diet, but I think he's just trying to give you advice. And there are some things I agree with. And there are some things I don't. Check it out. Welcome everyone to my very humble channel. Now let's get into it. A lot of you guys know that I am the keto mother sucking queen. I've been doing this keto diet for 16 years. Here's the thing. There was one guru that was around before me and that is Dr. Berg. Now here's what's quite interesting. I used to kind of make fun of him and I really shouldn't have done that because I'm a grown ass woman. He had a lot or has a lot of great information about the body. He started off talking about the adrenal body years and years ago. I think I started picking at him when he started talking about keto because he would say stuff I just wasn't aligned with. But I still should have just stayed in my own lane. But today he put out a video because we gonna bring keto back. He just put out a video of like when to stop or uh, if you're having problems, when to stop doing a keto diet or what is a solution. And it's sort of what I'm doing. Uh, we, I ended up interviewing him and apologizing to him on a live stream. And then he invited me to his summit right when Slovid happened. So we were only able to do it online. So I have, that's a fly by the way. I have respect for him. Um, I'm not always in alignment with some of his ideologies, but some things I do agree with. So let's do a review and I'm going to sort of fill in the gaps. I think that he might not be filling in and some of the things that he's doing that I believe could be some great advice. So let me pull up this image right now. Okay, guys, it says when to change your keto diet. Let's give a listen to what Dr. Berg says now and at the end of 2023 about keto diets. About certain indicators or signs that you need to change the ketogenic diet. So let's go through these. If you're feeling more tired or weaker when you start the ketogenic plan, um, something's not right. And we are gonna discuss what to do if that happens, but fatigue- He is correct, by the way. Fatigue and weakness are one of the indicators. Number two, if you happen to notice that you're looking older, like let's say your hair is drying out or your skin looks more wrinkled, there's a problem. Something needs to change. If you start feeling heart palpitations, right? That's not good. Obviously, whatever you're doing needs to be looked at. If you are still hungry, then there's a problem. And especially if you're not seeing results with your weight, chances are you probably need to change something too. And lastly, if you start developing kidney stones or even maybe more inflammation, then you're not on the right program. So what is the ketogenic plan? The ketogenic diet is merely the reduction of carbohydrates. The reduction of carbohydrates by itself is not necessarily something that increases or creates health. That would be like saying, the reduction of poison will make you healthier. Well, no, it prevents disease, but it doesn't necessarily build or create health. So the lowering of carbs will prevent a lot of problems like diabetes, a fatty liver, being overweight, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I emphatically disagree with his generalization. I think here's where the problem is. Perhaps when you're putting out content and you're not really, really thinking, keto. I want you guys to really hear me well. Keto, K-E-T-O, is short for ketone. Ketone is a unit of fat that is going to be produced in your liver. You can break down fatty acids through lipolysis. You convert the fat into ketones via the liver. It goes into your Krebs cycle and into all the cells of your body for energy. 
but you can't just cut your carbs out because if you have, if your blood sugar is like boink, 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 boink all over the place, which most of it is for you guys, a lot of you have your blood sugar all over the place, then, uh, sorry, that's a fly, then perhaps it will continue. Yes. So it's very, very important to understand that if your blood sugar is like this and you drop out your carbs, it's that gap, the, the smaller bouncing of blood sugar becomes incredibly high to low, overproducing insulin, glucagon's not doing its job, your blood sugar stays too low, it's high to low, and you feel awful. So you just don't cut out your carbs and then fix diabetes. But uh, let's continue. Etc. But the question is, if you're lowering carbs, what are you replacing it with? And what are those calories doing to your health? So the ketogenic diet is about replacing your fuel from glucose to not nuts, fat and Sorry. ketones. But generally speaking, the ketogenic diet doesn't talk about the quality of your carbs, proteins, and fats. And this is why and the irony is, I think he's using, I don't know if this is his image or if he's just doing a screenshot but the majority of those fats are garbage the oils oxidize as soon as light hits it and it's not even a dark color olive oil to the left of the screen almonds have oxalates or oxalic acid uh, peanut butter is a legume and super super phytic acid robs your body of minerals and in magnesium calcium terrible the eggs are good, the meat is good, the avocado is good, the spinach has oxalic acid or oxalates, and the cheese has casein, which is incredibly inflammatory to the gut wall. So this image, no way now. Let's keep going. I recommend the healthy ketogenic diet. So this goes beyond just lowering your carbs to 5% and keeping your proteins at 20% and having your fats at 75%. So let's just start with what happens when you start running your body on ketones. You actually generate more energy, ATP. ATP is like the storage currency of energy in your body. And there's definitely a difference. If you run your body on glucose, uh, you generate like about 8.7 kilograms of ATP. And then on ketones, you generate 10.5 kilograms of ATP. So we got 8.7 to 10.5. So ketones give you more energy and that energy is more efficient. There's less waste, but. So I agree with him. That's what I'm saying. There are some things he says that are amazing and some things I'm like, eh, nah. Um, yes, uh, ketones are burn more evenly. Carbohydrates burn really fast. You can go through glycogen storages in your muscle very quickly. And then once your glycogen is depleted and you're continuing to move and do things, your body has to start breaking down proteins to then through cortisol to then raise your blood sugar back up to be balanced. And this is a problem because if you are constantly in this process of gluconeogenesis, then you're inflamed and you start looking gaunt. These are the faster people who fasting, who've got like dark circles around the eyes and crepey skin and hanging skin and, and things of this nature, trying to get into the ketosis with not enough fat on a ketogenic diet and then they're fasting. Now, uh, if you're doing carbs, you will eat carbs, you deplete your carbs, then you go into gluconeogenesis. Uh-oh, we got a donkey rubbing on the wall. You go into gluconeogenesis and then you just tear apart your amino acids. We don't want that, or we don't want to tear apart our amino acids, skin, collagen, all the stuff that makes you look young through any of these two means, fasting or doing carbs where you're not keeping the gly glycogen storages at level playing field, filled glycogen within the muscle. Now, he's, he's got up there feeling tired, looking older, heart palpitations, still craving, still hungry, uh, no weight loss in kidneys. So I'm gonna break this down. What are these donkeys doing? Okay. Feeling tired and weak is because your protein might be too high, your fats are too low, 
or your thyroid is aggravated, right? You might've developed hypoglycemia, dysglycemia. Looking older is the gluconeogenesis from not using ketones because again, your protein might be too high and your fats are too low. You're eating the wrong foods, the wrong type of ketogenic macros. Heart palpitations is typically due to two reasons, mainly potassium deficiency, but also people who have an underactive thyroid will also experience heart palpitations. You can also develop palpitations from histamine, eating like, oh, I'm doing keto, so I should do butter coffee. And you never did that in the past. And now all of a sudden you're having a histamine reaction to the butter and the coffee. Still craving means probably your protein's too high and not enough fat. Still hungry, same reason. No weight loss means you are not in ketosis. You cannot use a glucometer and just look at ketones. You have to look at glucose and ketones. They have to be within range. Glucose needs to be between a 75 and an 83. Ketones need to be between a 1.8 and a 3.0. And you have to have energy. Kidney stones come from chronic dehydration, my people. And perhaps eating, eating uh, uh, too much stevia, uh, too many, um, too much spinach. And what else gives you kidney stones um, and being chronically dehydrated. But let's continue. Here's the thing. When you go on the ketogenic plan, the demand for certain nutrients goes up. That's very important to know because if you don't uh, eat more of certain things or take certain nutrients, you can end up with some side effects, whether that's keto fatigue, keto rash, keto flu, whatever. So, Okay, so what's keto fatigue? Keto fatigue is eating too much protein. That protein is converting into glucose. If the body has to compete between sugar and, and um, well, protein, which becomes converted into sugar because you're eating too much protein, or you have stress in your life and the body goes into gluconeogenesis, breaks down proteins in your body and your blood sugar spikes, and the ketones are low because you don't have enough fat, that'll make you feel fatigued. And that can aggravate your thyroid or your adrenal, your hypothalamus, pituitary and adrenal axis and the thyroid axis. Now, uh, yeah, let's continue. So the two general categories of nutrition that you need to increase more of B vitamins, okay, and electrolytes. Couple points on B vitamins. Okay, number one, your B vitamins should come from, I know you guys can't see me, liver, kidney. You're gonna get a lot of, well, you can get it from your red meats, but liver especially has ample amounts of B12. Let's continue. Vitamins, I would really try to make sure that you do the natural bees okay. and you can get that from nutritional yeast no. and fortified. No, please don't use nutritional yeast. If you want your bees, go get some liver. A lot of you are having gnarly histamine reactions to nutritional yeast and there's just too many carbs. And unfortunately, nutritional yeast can spike your blood sugar. So you're not getting enough bees from nutritional yeast and then it's bunch of blood sugar and people have a histamine reaction. So do not use nutritional yeast for your bees. Eat liver. You can get pretty much all the electrolytes if you have enough salad in your diet. Seven. Okay, I love you, Dr. Berg, but ridiculous, ridiculous. He wants you to eat seven to 10 cups of green vegetables to get enough potassium in, right? Because per cup, you're only getting about 70 grams of potassium. He thinks you need 4,700 grams of potassium. I absolutely emphatically disagree with that. I've seen people eat about 1,200 milligrams, or sorry, 1,200 grams of potassium and be fine as long as you balance potassium with sodium, magnesium, and water. So please do not do all those vegetables, which most of you are having a histamine response to. Greens have oxalic acid in them. A lot of you guys are just reacting to the greens itself. And if, if you have a thyroid issue, it is a cluster fluck of a mess. If you're trying to get iodine in from the sea, uh, but yeah, no, please do not eat. I have people do about a cup of vegetables on a keto diet, if that, every day, one time a day, if not every other day and one cup only. Let's continue. In the 10 cups, um, or if you do electrolyte powder, make sure it doesn't have hidden sugars and make sure it has 
How about no electrolyte powder, right? The only powder that I suggest is if you have a histamine reaction to avocados, you can do a potassium citrate, fix the freaking histamine issues in the gut wall so you can start eating avocados again, meat broth, shellfish, these things are higher in potassium, pork, rather than some chemicalized product that's been bleached and sterilized in a lab called an electrolyte. No, no, no. Good amount of potassium and other electrolytes as well. And let's not forget, sodium chloride are two additional electrolytes like salt. So if you're not consuming enough salt on the ketogenic diet, you're going to feel weak. So we want to make sure we add. He's correct and incorrect. You do sodium and potassium because if you guys do a bunch of salt it drives down your potassium and then comes the heart racing heart palps and the muscle twitching and the facial twitching in the daytime no you never drive salt without potassium and then you have to include water in that add more sea salt when you're on the ketogenic plan very important in fact you need more sea salt on the ketogenic plan than you do on a high carb diet on the high carb diet, you tend to retain sodium chloride, but on keto, you tend to kind of get rid of it. So if you. That is correct. You do dump salt and other electrolyte minerals more easily because you are losing a lot of water. I know this because I've done this for 16 years. And for every year that keeps climbing, climbing consistently being ketotic, it is the one worrying problem is your electrolytes. The more you're on keto, the more you lose them. So it's not just sodium, it's sodium, potassium, magnesium, water, and in some cases with people, calcium. If you don't have enough of it, you're going to generally feel weak. Your muscles are going to be weak, especially when you exercise. The next- You'll actually feel weak, you'll feel nauseous, and you'll have like a lot of lactic acid burn without bal balancing sodium and potassium and magnesium. This point about this topic is making sure that you eat foods that are more nutrient dense, okay? Because a good portion of the population is deficient, especially in zinc, Correct. vitamin D, iron, Correct. iodine, and even vitamin A. Here are some foods, generally speaking, that you should be. He's very, he is very correct with all of those deficiencies. Eating more of pasture raised eggs, eating eggs from chickens that roam around on the grass. That this is a great idea, but a lot of you guys have developed an egg allergy because you're having a weak gut wall. There's this cross reactivity going on. So I would recommend if you have a histamine intolerance to the whites doing yolks because there's less of the protein that is aggravating to somebody with histamine and then the whole egg. If you can tolerate whole eggs, have at it, pastured eggs, that's lovely. It will give you a lot of nutrients, especially the vitamin A. It gives you the trace minerals that you need, like zinc, copper, iodine, manganese. Very important. Grass-fed, grass-finished. He is correct. But you can also get those in liver, all from all types of animals, except for the iodine. Then you can get that from, from oysters or oyster extract as well. Beef. These animal meats give you the bioavailable nutrients that you need like the best source of iron the best source of zinc the active form of vitamin a versus i disagree i don't think that your ribeye or your your um your chuck or any of the 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 muscle meat is going to give you enough a or d or any of these iron i think you will get iron but a lot of people will get dry hung steak and all the blood strained out so you're having less iron but if you're doing liver you're gonna have more zinc than in the muscle meat more copper more selenium more vitamin c more iron than in the uh just the the muscle meat so ribeyes aren't going to do it enough go for the organ meats this is trying to get those nutrients from plants like for example walnut has the precursor to the omega-3 uh, DHA, but very little bit of it gets converted. Kale has a lot of pre-vitamin A as beta carotene, Horrible. but very little gets converted to retinol, the active form. If you were So he's correct. Kale or carrots that have carotene in it, they don't convert into retinol, the usable form of vitamin A very well. But then with like kale, it's so goitrogenic 
Like you're literally just jacking up your thyroid on kale. Toss your kale, toss your walnuts, the hepatic acid that like women who bleed a lot or can absorb iron very well, do not eat kale or nuts. Or to do occasional organ meats like liver, that would be really good. Thank not you. only do you need these animal products like meat and fish, seafood, but you also need to make sure that they're organic. Organic food in itself does have more nutrition for sure, but it's also the avoidance of pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides. Okay. I don't want to go too far into the weeds of analyzing a Dr. Berg video, but I do like the fact that he's talking about keto diets again. Um, he, I think the one split we have is on all those goitrogenic, freaking gut busting vegetables. Don't my people do not, especially if you have severe histamine intolerance. That's why a lot of people actually do a carnivore diet because they can't tolerate plants. The gut wall is so open. You have to learn how to seal it up, get the stress down. Once the intestinal wall seals up and you balance your microbes a little bit more, you can start reintroducing back some of these plants and do a proper ketogenic keto omnivorous diet. But like seven to 10 cups of vegetables, disaster, a disaster. I don't understand. He's trying to get more potassium in. But if you guys don't tolerate avocados, then you can do potassium citrate or glycinate or bicarbonate for the short term until you get that histamine under control and can start either eating avocados or doing potassium citrate. Yes. And you can get it from other sources, like from meat broth, not bone broth, but the meat broth. Well, guys, I just wanted to do a quick little review of a Dr. Berg video and say that there are some things that I align with what he's saying and some things I absolutely feel that he needs to describe a little bit more and some things I disagree with. But for the most, I think that he put out pretty good information in that video, except for the cheese and the nuts, that, that picture of that, that's just like, like histamine, leaky gut explosion ready to happen within the gut. Mm -mm. If you guys want to learn more, go to stephaniepersoncom book a consultation. If you feel that you need help, because I know all those little things that maybe he's not mentioning because I coach, I've been coaching people, thousands of people for so many years that I really feel like I got a handle of carnivore keto omnivore and low carb high fat and how to go in between these different dietary measures for different type of health issues. You can also join my subscription membership. It's month to month, $15 a month. If you feel that you need some more guidance on one of those diets, cause I cover all three. There's also, uh, my Instagram, which is Stephanie ketogenic. Also my Facebook fan page, which is Stephanie, the business person. I'm 55 going on 56. I got energy. I've been doing this for 60, 16 years, but be very careful. The electrolytes, that is the problem. Not the thyroid, not the weight gain or the weight loss. It is your electrolytes. It is very important to stay on top of the electrolytes, mag magnesium, find the right type of magnesium. If you can tolerate glycinate, if you can do avocados, then that will be your potassium. One or two avocados a day. I think that this idea of doing 4,700 is a complete cluster fluck and can potentially drop your sodium and put your electrolytes out of balance if you take in too much potassium. Uh, get ready for the challenge. Signups will be soon, but I got to finish it and then I will release the dates coming, most likely in September. And I'm out. Comment below. Tell me what you think. Are you wanting to do, have you done carnivore and now ready to do keto? Carnivore is not the answer, my people. I have a ton of videos and the myths and how people uh, kind of get it wrong thinking it's going to be like this miracle diet. It's not. It's really good to sit more in a keto omnivorous way so you can get some more of these electrolytes in your plants so you can get diamine, oxid diamine oxidase production, keep it there and to keep your microbes in your gut in balance it's not for pooping, it's just keep the microbes in balance. And when you choose to have something like a kefir, then the bacteria can attach to the fiber, prebiotic, prebiotic fiber. And I'm out. Energy. Stephanie Ketogenic is my Instagram. And yeah, 
life is good. Life is really good. Peace. Check out the next video. Comment below. <laughs>